thanksgiving. Continue in what? And watching the same with thanksgiving. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 10 to 12. It's talking about a sister called Hannah. First Samuel chapter 1. Says, and she was in the bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept so. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Be, be kind to give us verse 12. Very kind of you. And it came to pass, as she continued praying, as she what? Continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. You know, so that there are motions in prayer. One of the motions in prayer is to continue earnestly in prayer. There is prayer without season. Then there is also continuing earnestly in prayer. And what that does is that destiny holds where, when prayer is not consistent. Nothing positive continues until prayer earnestly continues. That's why I say continue in prayer. Whatever is about to succeed will not continue until prayer continues earnestly. Hey, the job is about to succeed. The marriage is about to succeed. When you are at the verge of that breakthrough, the momentum can be halted until you continue praying. Daniel saw that their season of slavery and bondage was over. Liberty was about to happen, but it had to be in a space where a man was continuing in prayer. There are many things that could be halted at the verge of explosion, of manifesting. And what the devil does is to just make your feeling become some way. Then you feel dry. Then you feel, you know, you don't feel yourself again. Then it's like the church cry is not praying much. And I don't know. No. Continue praying. Whatever wants to succeed will not continue to succeed until you continue earnestly in prayer. It's God talking to someone now. You know, Hannah was there and she was very, is about to succeed to have a child. Whatever is working will stop if you don't continue earnestly in prayer. Whatever is working, the things that are working right now, they will stop. The relationship will stop. The marriage, the church will stop. Are you here? The business will stop. It's just moving, but it will stop. If you want it to continue to move, continue to pray. Is God talking to someone now? Your intelligence will stop. If you stop praying. Yeah, because you see that it's the Holy Ghost who is pumping that brain with memory, with clarity, with something. Continue to pray. On your own, you are there. You don't pray because you have prayer point too. And stop praying powerful prayers. So many of you don't pray because you don't think you have powerful prayers. Or you know powerful prayers to pray. You know, powerful prayers are useless prayers. There's no prayer called powerful prayer. All you need is a powerful God you are praying to. And, and, and the prayer will be powerful because you are praying to a powerful God who makes powerful things happen. Don't try to be a specialist of prayer. You know, when you are doing this, this is how you pray. When you are doing this, this is how. No, it's like, call on to me. So of you, it's okay. When you want to marry and the witches are after you, how do you decode? You are looking for powerful prayers. Don't look for power. Look at all the people who pray the powerful prayers. We are still coming back. Coming back. He said, when you pray in my name, whatsoever you ask, my father will give you if you say my name. No powerful prayers. The powerful prayer is a prayer you pray in faith. Love, with love for God 
having a relationship with him and tangoing with him in an unbroken relationship. I love you to meet. Hey. Praying to a powerful God. See, as a friend, he knows how to pray. And blah, blah, blah. But you know, the mother, the father, they know how to interpret the cry of their babies. Are you here at all? You can, don't try to articulate like I do. It, do you understand? <laughs> are you sure you are here? So many people are beaten down because you are just trying to do it like whoever is your prayer champion. And sometimes you feel like, you know, somebody will call you, I wanted you to pray for me and if there are some directions and some country, me, you will give me so that I can overturn the matter. I say, just pray to a powerful God. Just pray to a powerful God. And when you are praying to him, say, God, I, love, I want marriage. You see, I know I'm gnashing. I need, I need marriage. I need someone who will love me and I also want love. Then sometimes we'll be talking and I like to be talking to a human being, not a tree. He talk to God. He talk to God. <laughs> Do you, are you here at all? You continue to pray. And sometimes I want somebody to put their hand around me. You know, I will rub my back. You know, it will feel good. Pa. Yeah, you will be telling God. You know, but in the end, that your will and purpose for my life will be established. Do you understand? Powerful God. Not powerful prayers. Because you will be confused. Whether the prayer you are praying is powerful or not. And the powerful prayer is when you trust in God. And you are praying to this powerful God who is able to do all, even beyond what you think or ask. And you have put your trust and faith in him. And you are praying by faith, knowing that before I ask, he's already done it. It's too powerful. Are you here at all? So it doesn't make you stop praying. You pray earnestly without any second gear, without any second mind, without doubting, because a, a double-minded person, you know, you know, a double-minded person, you see people praying very powerful prayers and they are double-minded. Because it's like they are testing the prayer. You don't test prayer. <laughs> you believe what you are praying in the will of God and you expect a manifestation because you pray to the right person. Are you here? It's too powerful. Is it powerful already? Yes. You will succeed in Jesus' mighty name.